Leclerc and teammate Carlos Sainz faced challenges from the start of the race, initially falling to the tail end of the top 10 when George Russell's Mercedes and Nico Hülkenberg's Haas slipped ahead on the opening lap and forcing them to work their way back in front. As the encounter settled down, it transpired that both Ferraris, alongside McLaren's Lando Norris, were attempting to pull off a medium to hard tire one stop strategy, with the lead Red Bulls of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez opting for two pit lane visits instead, while Norris made the most of a virtual safety car and two full safety car periods to clear Perez. Leclerc felt the interventions hindered Ferrari's efforts as the Monegascan Saints wound up fourth and fifth following their particularly long stints on hards, which proved unfavorable on the SF24. Asked to reflect on his race and if he was surprised by McLaren's performance relative to Ferrari as the afternoon unfolded, Leclerc said I think as a team we were quite confident that our race pace was very strong, however, we didn't drive on the hard during the weekend until now, and once we put the hard on we were slower than what we expected, so that was a big surprise. Especially McLaren were very, very strong on the hard. I think we have also been put on the back foot with the safety car because that put us in the same strategy as everybody and until that moment I was doing a really, really good job with the tires and I was very confident that we could do a great race, after that it was much more difficult. After his shock you won elimination on Saturday, Mercedes and Hamilton went down a different, bold route on strategy by starting on the soft tires, though initial progress from P18 on the grid was limited. Hamilton even dropping a position at the start as he confirmed that the soft compound fell apart after lap one. Hamilton was ultimately able to rise up to order, once those soft tires were out of the way, crossing the line a respectable P9, though Hamilton felt teammate George Russell, three places up the road in P6, was in the region where he too should have been looking to finish. He said I fought maybe at the beginning, I tapped someone because I have never had so much understeer in my life. So I was turning in at slow speed and waiting, waiting, waiting. So, I thought I had damaged something like some of the others, because there was debris going everywhere at one point. But it was just the setup that I chose. With better decisions on setup, we would be around where George is, but we just have to keep fighting. After the highs of his P2 finish in Saturday's sprint, having led the first half of the mini race, Grand Prix Sunday in China was a rough come down for Hamilton as he recorded his third P9 finish of the F1 2024 campaign. The Shanghai International Circuit is a place where Hamilton has claimed victory a record six times before, as the seven-time world champion heaped praise on the fans after F1 first visits since 2019, as he confirmed that he can't wait to come back. He said the city is great, and the fans, I saw the fans at my hotel this morning, fans that have been with me for 16 years, then you see them on the track, they've been so supportive, it's really beautiful to see, and I'm really happy that we got to come back to Shanghai. The track is awesome so I can't wait to come back next year. Rightly or wrongly, they're deeply unhappy at no longer competing at the front, where a lesser team might only only worry about the cars immediately around them. That's not enough for Hamilton. Hence the tinkering with his car setup. As far as I know, this constant tinkering has not been a characteristic of Ham overall career, which gives slight weight to my theory. In other side ghastly chances of surging from 15th on the grid to score a point at the Chinese Grand Prix, were hindered when he made a 19-second pit stop, a scary moment delaying him in the pits. In the pits to swap his medium Pirellis for a set of hard tires, Gasly was given the green light to lead the pits, only for to quickly change to red as his rear right tire was not attached. However, momentarily pulling away before slamming the brakes, the Frenchman knocked over one of his mechanics, who was fortunate not to have the driver drive over him, that incident subsequently lending Alpine a 10,000 euros fine for an unsafe pit stop. He said, yay, quite scary. Actually, my green light, the light went green so I dropped the clutch, but then it went red straight away. And then I saw him in the mirror and saw the wheel wasn't on. The mechanic is fine, which I was a bit scared of. We've had a couple of instances this year where I've lost some time on the box, so I'm sure we'll review exactly what's happened and improve it for next time. Stationary for 19 seconds. Gasly dropped to the very back of the field. He recovered to 13th place, where he was 9 seconds away from a top 10 showing. The driver claiming his lap won drama with Alex Albin, which was noted by the stewards although they felt no further action was required, also cost him on the day. The good news for Gasly is that the next race weekend, Miami, he'll also have Alpine's upgraded chassis, which is a couple of kilograms lighter than their first edition for 2024. Ferrari's Carlos Sainz said he and Charles Leclerc fighting at the race start in China hadn't helped either driver. 
the two Ferrari drivers fought hard through the opening corners of the Chinese Grand Prix, with Leclerc ensuring Sainz didn't get past him, with a little tension between the two Ferrari drivers, following Saturday's sprint race, due to Sainz defending hard against Leclerc through the hairpin, before the Monegasque driver got in front. Leclerc appeared to get his pay back at the race start on Sunday, negotiating the first corner. Leclerc ran Sainz out wide to ensure the Spaniard couldn't get past him but in the process, cost themselves position. Speaking after the checkered flag, Sainz was asked about the situation and said it was evident their fight had not benefited either driver. He said I'd prefer not to comment, but it's obviously quite clear that it cost us both positions, so yay, it didn't help either of us. Having recovered to fifth by the checkered flag, Sainz explained the strategy Ferrari had employed. He said I think given what our pace was today, I think better than P5 was impossible. Also, we had a very poor start with a situation there in turns 1 and 2 that cost both cars two positions. From there on, we were just playing catch up. We had to box very early for the hard. Then we had to one stop from lap 18 or something like this, which went forever on the hard tire, which we were never gonna go much more forward. At least we saved P5, but given the pace of the car this weekend, the decisions we took and the situation after the start, I think it was the maximum we could achieve. Speaking to the media in Shanghai, following the checkered flag, Ferrari team boss Fred Vassar dismissed the idea that the drivers fighting at turn 1 had cost them a better position by race end. Sainz said it's not a good help to lose a position at the start, but in the end we were behind Perez and Norris at the start, and we finished behind them also at the end of the race. I think if we lost something, it was in the last stint. Carlos was a bit unlucky with the timing of the pit stop because he did either three or four laps before the VSC and then the safety car, and he was a bit scared to do a very long stint with the last set of hards. He was a bit conservative at the beginning, but he did very well to manage the long stint like this. Well, I think Carlos, as a quite clever guy, recognized quite a long time ago that even if the stewards are a bit inconsistent and a bit hard with the penalties sometimes, incidents between teammates are a bit less often penalized, if not for any other reason, then because none of the teams will ask for a penalty or hand over more evidence just to make a collision but when their drivers even worse for themselves. I think Fred Vassar has been a breath of fresh air for Ferrari and his cool management style has not gone unnoticed. Underneath that coolness, I see a wealth of experience and management expertise. I strongly believe that he will be the next team principal to bring glory back to Ferrari in 2026, and beyond when the regulations change, he is putting all of his ducks in a row, and that is the hallmark of an astute leader.